there's so much uh, history and acknowledgement of the Ivory Bill in, in the past. You know, people like Theodore Roosevelt and, and, and Audubon. You know, those people were, were really taken by the bird, you know. And it's just a symbol of these bottomland forests. I'm here at the Black Swamp along the Cache River in Arkansas looking for the elusive ivory-billed woodpecker. If you think about it, the ivory-billed woodpecker is kind of a, a bird of imagination. Somebody talked about it's a bird that borders on magic and science. For me, it's, it's something that represents what the American wilderness used to be. There is a subculture of bird watchers who have been chasing ivory bills for 60 years. Why, why mm -hmm. come out here and spend your time searching for something that may not be there? Well, uh, you're not gonna see it sitting at home. You have no chance there. So you come out here, you got a chance. The ivory bill always fascinated me because the bird book said it was possibly extinct or likely extinct. Might be a few left in Cuba, and I guess someday I thought I would uh, go to Cuba and look for them there. In uh, 2000, when I heard about the sightings in Louisiana, or the sighting by David Cullivan in Louisiana. I, uh, uh, I just knew I had to go. If we could find one ivory bill woodpecker, it'd mean that there's still some of that magical history left. Even in the time of Audubon and the early explorers, the ivory bill always had a special appeal. I have a connection to it in that my dad actually was born and, and grew up adjacent to the Singer Tract, which was the last stronghold of these birds. People talk about ivory bills as being like a different color of black. I just want to see that. I think it'd be cool. 